Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Garrido, and I, uh, I try every day hard to lead the uh, commercial division of One Stop Realty. One Stop Realty, we are located in Westchester and Doral. And uh, check us out at onestoprealty.com, and you will see all the great services that you can get on one stop here in Westchester or Doral. The broker, Samuel Bejerano and Alicia Bejerano, and all of us here are here to help you. And we're here for the monthly commercial uh, lecture uh, class, and it's a free lecture open to all agents and, uh, and, and brokers here in Miami, Dade County. And um, I have been giving these classes for the past year, year and a half, and we have a great turnout today. And also, I, uh, to add, uh, I will be starting uh, some lectures at the Miami Board of Realtors, Miami Springs headquarters, and, and the Coral Gables headquarters coming in May. May 1st, uh, 10 o'clock at the Miami Springs headquarters. I'll be there to uh, talk to you about zoning and how it works in real estate. It's a great topic which uh, probably many uh, don't don't know much about but those who know also can come by and we can have a good network and it's a two-hour course on May 1st at the Miami Springs Board of Realtors and you can check them out at the Miami Board uh, website and, and on May 15th at the Coral Gables headquarters and uh, you will be, I'm sure you will be receiving uh, uh, emails as the days go by. Uh, first of all we have a good turnout here of agents and we're going to start today with a very important topic, which is uh, due diligence period and the items and, and its items. And basically, um, what is due, due diligence? And due diligence period usually refers to the time after signing a contract that the buyer has to inspect the property and make a decision whether they want to buy the property or lease the property or otherwise go forward with a transaction. Everybody loves to have a contract signed, right? And everybody loves to have your, your escrow deposit in, and, but you know what? You're not there yet. Here comes the important part, the due diligence part. And you can work for the buyer, you can represent the buyer, or you can represent the seller. Whichever case may be, you know, the duties are, are, has changed. If you're representing the, the, the seller, then you have to wait for the due diligence from the buyer part. But if you know every single step in the due diligence, you can help quite a bit in the negotiation phase of the real estate transaction. Okay. And we'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, so the due diligence is an important part in it. It's zoning and land use. And the zoning and land use due diligence has become an important factor for any commercial real estate transaction. I believe it's the first, all right? Because if you don't know what you can build on the property, then you might as well not start marketing your property, but you have to at least have some knowledge of it. Zoning laws, which are constantly changing, dictate how a commercial site of property can be constructed, remodeled, or used for business. And lenders, banks, financiers, insurers, and buyers want to ensure that their real estate investment is well protected. They're lending you money. They want to know that they're putting their money, which is a property, which is uh, well calculated. The comparables are there, and they can be happy with you for the next 30 or 40 years, the amount of the mortgages. Some states require that the buyer to conduct a, a zoning due diligence investigation before purchasing or building a commercial property. And real estate lawyers advise our clients uh, to perform complete zoning due diligence. And I always state it, we are not here to give any, any uh, legal advice, all right? That's why we have attorneys, but it's always good to have all this knowledge within you about how the due diligence process in real estate functions. Why? Because if you're sitting at a table with a lawyer, real estate lawyer, and the buyer, and the seller, and the lenders, and here you are, you're a commercial real estate agent, but you know all the little nuances that they are talking about, you'll be well there in the conversation. In fact, you get to, you'll get you gain some credibility with these people and with the, with the buying and selling team. Uh, so what, what should you look for or know about in the due diligence period? And again, whether you're in the buyer side or in the seller side, if you're on if you're the seller side, the buyer is the one that's going to do its due diligence because he's put some money up front. He's going to see if that property really 
can you know return what you have marketed for it, or but but it works for both sides. So you should and you should and must obtain all available property docs, which means all the property documents. Uh, thank God for the internet. You go to MiamiDade.gov, G-O-V, you can get all the property docs there from the property appraiser and start, you know, in, instructing yourself what's happening with this property. Zoning verification letters. You go to the zoning department in Miami-Dade County or whichever municipality or governmental jurisdiction it is, and some places they charge very little money, you know, maybe $50, $75, and they'll give you a zoning verification letter, which usually takes around two weeks. That is like an official document which states to you this is what you can build on the property. Uh, zoning reports from owner, if there's any, and you'll ask them, and they'll tell you yes or no. If they uh, want to sell and they have it, they're going to give it to you because that's their, their deal. They want to move forward with the sale of the property. Building and zoning code violation letters. Again, you go to miamidade.gov, G-O-V, and these are the things that I will be presenting at the Board of Realtors. And you go under the code enforcement and you have every single property in Miami-Dade County which has been given a violation if it's open or it's closed. If it's open, you're going to have a problem towards the title, you know, the title search and, and the closing. Uh, certificate of occupancy and use. Why? Well, if you're selling a property or you're selling a business, which is a restaurant, you want, or, 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 or right now uh, was a restaurant, it's closed. You want to know exactly what was there before that restaurant. And you want to know exactly what was the certificate of use in that restaurant. That restaurant could have been closed for three, four years. You're trying to close on the property. But at the same time, they somebody else came and did a certificate of use for, a, a, you know, an office, even though the some equipment is there. And then you're going to have problems. So that's important, the certificate of use and occupancy, because it's based on the next use that's coming in. Uh, any building permit variances that were granted to the property uh, that were never used, that's important. Plan unit developments, which is basically for uh, townhomes, uh, the PUDs, which are the uh, plan units, uh, uh, walled in uh, communities. Uh, the site plans, zoning codes, and research the area and photographs. And these are, are things that you should do an itemized list and just go through them so you get yourself instructed on them. So, why is zoning important to my deal? because it is a key element in all commercial real estate deals, both big and small. And the zoning of your property can determine how you can use the existing building and land, as well as the type and extent of improvements that can be made to the site. So we go here with uh, uh, different areas which are important during the due diligence problem. And uh, I mean, you, I'll, I'll tell you all the numbers, but you can, you know, you can, uh, there's no really chronological process that you can follow, but you can start on this one, which is collecting property information. Basic data is a property of the property is the backbone of your due diligence. Record information like lot and building size. Again, this is all in miamiday.gov property search. The number of floors, unit count, property type, parking, zoning, and current use. Next, cross-check broker or seller provide information with public data and field measurements. Investigate any discrepancies vigorously. And again, you need a survey. That is most important. They can tell you it's 4.34 acres, 4.4 acres. The survey will exactly tell you the amount of acres that is included in the, in, in the property. And investigate any discrepancies and don't trust any piece of information that cannot be independently verified. Second, Evaluate the building system. If there's a building in the property or if there's a vacant land, if there's a building in the property, even the most complex structures can be broken down into the component parts. Inspectors and other experts are essential to evaluating each element of a building. Again, maybe in a process uh, during the building uh, sale, there's going to be architects involved, engineers involved, and you say, well, if there's architects and engineers, why do I have to do this? You know, let them do it. But it never hurts to go ahead and during the process and nurture yourself with this information, which is readily available, many of it at Miami-Dade and the, and, the, and the government section, miamidade.gov under the building department, miamidade.gov forward slash building. Inspector bring in experts to examine structural systems and that, of course, the uh, buyer will do. And, and they'll check the electrical, the plumbing, gas, heating, cooling, windows, 
so on, and all the goodies that make that building uh, uh, oper uh, operable. Understand how utilities are brought to the building and meter, and that is so important. And a vacant land, oh, this is a beautiful land, and, and you know, it's, it's frontage on a, on a major corridor. And some people, you know, oh, I love it. I'm going to put, you know, a, a deposit on it. Hmm. Check and see where the water and sewer is. You go to MiamiDade.gov, water and sewer department, free of charge. You can sit there and they will they will give you information where the where the closest water services and where the closest uh, sewer is. If you find yourself a lot and um, that you love it because of the conditions, all of a sudden you go to Miami Dade Water and Sewer and you find that the closest a sewer connection is five blocks away, maybe a quarter mile. That's costly. And if you're the from the seller part, you you know you should know this information. And, uh, and and talk to the seller. Hey, you know we have this information from Miami Day Water and Sewer, and that will you know help you out in terms of uh, determining what's the highest and best value. Okay, because these are things during the due diligence process that the buyer will ask for, which is a very important, especially in a vacant land. If it's been in, if it's been improved, probably the sewer connections are already there. Uh, conducting inspections and reviewing reports. Uh, investing in single family homes uh, necessitates really very few inspections, which is the three point inspections, as we all know, which is roof, electrical, structural, whereas adaptive reuse opportunities in large multifamily communities or industrial or commercial may require an army of vendors to descend on the property. Okay? And again, as per se, you may need our specific, uh, best inspectors, contractors, architects, engineers, and so on. Very important on vacant land environmental one and environmental two uh, consultants. You're going to go through that because vacant land, uh, focus you, on us. Don't I'm sorry, focus on us. Not the okay, land. because uh, you probably, uh, you right. probably uh, wouldn't know what's been there no years right. back. You, you probably don't know what's been there years back. Uh, say a vacant land, uh, it could have been there for years, but probably 10 years ago, it was a parking lot for trucks. So that might, that might have some environmental issue. Uh, if it's close to a dump area or any other uses like mechanical, whatever that could bring a problem during the sale of the property. Uh, don't, don't forget to review non-physical items like building permits, violations. We talked about that court cases involving the seller in a preliminary title report. Uh, without a fully developed diligence checklist, a 30-year-old building code violations has overlooked and pop up six months post-closing. You know, if uh, violations are important, you can probably close and it can be over overlooked. And uh, three months later, you're going to a refinance and this time it was not overlooked. So, all right, you're gone, but they, it, can, it can, you know... Uh, take your post-closing uh, 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 problems uh, with it, and, and then it will just uh, delay the process. But that's important always to, to know it, violations that are that are um, involved in the property. Gathering tenant information again, if you're due diligence in this in this case, if you're selling a multifamily or you're selling a shopping center, uh, you have to gather all the, the the tenant, and we'll go a little bit through that later uh, later. And basically, rent, security deposit, utility obligations, uh, each lease, which uh, lease is uh, in, uh, what's included in the lease, if the lease are assigned, uh, if they are renewables, if you're buying a, a shopping center, uh, you want to know how long the leases are, that's important. I found cases where uh, you're looking at shopping centers and it has 30 tenants, out of the 30 tenants, there are probably like 10 of them uh, who, who don't have renewable leases or they They've expired, and the property manager hasn't hasn't uh, updated them. Let me tell you, you, you better get those leases renewed. If not, if you're on the seller side, you're, you're not going to move that forward because the buyer's going to ask you, where are the leases? Because basically, in shopping centers, retail, it's all it's uh, the, the cost of the property, the, the purchase of the property is all based, or the value of the property, it's all based on the lease and the type of leases. If it's three years, five years, and and, and so on. Uh, obtain seller disclosures, and we all know about that, all right? Require seller disclosures very widely for property type and deal specifics, so obtain as much as is feasible without expending too much negotiating equity on non-essential items. And these are things, you know, you, if they ask you, you know, uh, hey, 
what's this? You know, you have to, you should disclose it, all right? Uh, no, so we go into our due diligence checklist, and again, there are so many items in the due diligence checklist, and I don't want to uh, bore you with them, but just try to get the most important ones here that you can follow through. Sign letter of intent. If you can go to the contract immediately, even better. But some will give you the, 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 the LOI, all right? Sign letter of intent, and from there you proceed to contract. Investment committee presentation or approval, if there's some type of banking uh, committee or in your company or the buyer is a company that has a board of directors. Request, obtain due diligence materials, select legal counsel. Uh, and these are items that you're not gonna do, but the buyer should do so you know who its legal counsel is. Obtain first draft for purchase contract, second, and you can even go to five drafts based on, on the changes. You have an LOI, you go to the contract, the, the, the attorney goes to the contract immediately to, from the LOI, but that can completely just readdress, you readdress until both parties are in accordance. Obtain access agreement. All right, never go into a property if you haven't had, had any agreement, you know, with the buyer, of course, with the with the, the buyer. So you have that, so um, you'll know you're not going to have any liabilities. And <laughs> client authorization letter, portfolio manager authorization letter. These are if there's any uh, uh, portfolio managers who are buying the property. Obtain review fully executed purchase contract. That's important. All right, fully executed, initialed, and everything. And uh, the, the, the contract will be delivered fully to, to, into escrow. Um, arrange for buyer's in, in, initial or cash deposit with escrow holder. And all this is in the contract. Arrange for investments of, of buyer's initial cash deposit if you're from the buyer. These are things that they do. It's not that you're going to do it, but you need to know what they are doing. Uh, independent contract consideration to seller and prepare funding schedule and forward to portfolio manager client. All right, and these are things. If you're if you're representing a, a, a buyer, which is a holding company, which buys property, these are the things that they are going to do. So you say, why is it taking so long? These are all the things that they are going to do. And remember, in commercial real estate, specifically in most properties, uh, the values are, are, are extremely high. You know, you're residential. You probably, of course, there's two million dollar homes and three million, but the average here in Miami Dade County, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, in, 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 in real estate. They, they can triple that. So, you know, any minimum real estate, uh, commercial real estate transaction, you're, you're starting at a million up, usually, all right? Uh, obtain name of a client uh, title entity, and that's in the contract. Arrange for required bank accounts to be set up. That, that they do. Obtain fully executed first amendment to purchase contract. Obtain fully executed se second amendment if there's any changes to it. Uh, title survey and zoning matters, very important. Select title company, again, that, that will happen. Here at One Stop Realty, we have uh, a, a title company and, and when we one give that, title right, we, we give that service, which is One Stop Title. So basically the uh, transaction is being handled by us and we continue through One Stop Title service, which can handle it's all the attorney, own. Uh, attorney right. own, which is uh, can help us with all those transactions. Uh, receive, review, seller's title commitment underlying documents. Uh, order current title commitment. Order new Alta out, 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 uh, survey. And uh, that's basically the official certified survey by, by that entity. Subdivision and parcel maps. Restrictive covenants, that's important. If there's any covenants uh, uh, running with the land, uh, you can find all that, that in Miami-Dade zoning, which is very important. Local improvement district information. Verify leases, entitlements, and other assets are in seller's name, and confirm releases available from current lien holders, and, and again, deliver time survey objection letter to seller. Uh, tenant lease matters. Obtain the current rent roll. If this is in the case of a shopping center, retail, a multifamily, that's the first thing you're going to ask. What is the rent roll? What is your P&L? It's going to give you the, your NOI, which is net operating income, because from there you go to your cap rate. And that's what basically investors look for. What's a cap rate? That's a return. Like if you put a bank, what, how much interest are you going to give me? How much return uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm going to get from this property on, uh, 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 based on my investment? Return on the investment. Engage legal counsel to review leases and prepare lease summaries. Again, I always state it. We are not attorneys. We don't give legal advice. I usually, you know, I ask a client, you have an, you have an attorney, uh, uh, check, have your attorney check this, all right? We are not here to give legal advice. We can talk and we can be knowledgeable about the process, 
but we, know, we do not give legal advice. I review tenant lease files, very important. Each, each tenant file, it's completely different. You can find there are warnings that the uh, property manager has given the tenant. They've been late 10, 10, uh, 10 times. Even though they're up to date, they've been late 10 times. Oop, there's a little flag. And you're, and you're right. And that doesn't mean you're not going to buy the shopping center. But, hey, this tenant gives me a problem. When does it, its lease expire? Can I bring somebody else in and not renew their lease? Things like that. Or sit with that. Uh, resolve issues regarding leases. See, here we go. Review tenant correspondence files. There we go. Very important. Okay? If it's been a good property managing company, they're going to have a file for each tenant. They're going to have correspondence files. Hey, your check bounced. All this is important while you're looking at the property buying it. Uh, compare expense pass throughs, uh, CAM, common area maintenance charges to operating statements. Review cost pools for overch overcharge to tenants and receive tenant sales reports. And that again, tenant sales reports, if there's any percentage of sales reports going uh, with the lease, usually that is done on, I would say, in all parcels on big national uh, companies or that they charge a percentage of their sales. And uh, it's uh, very rare, but it does happen. You know, the big national chains, if they're coming in to a more? property, they, they, the they, yeah, the owner, whoever the owner would want, would want a percentage of, of the uh, of, of the sales. This happens, I think, a lot in the Miami International Airport, which they have all these concessions they have from percentage of their sales because they have goodwill. In the and people are going in. In the malls, right? Yeah. Some malls. Receive review list of security deposits, uh, receivables report, review tenant credit information, payment history. There you go, that's important. Uh, we'll go down, prepare tenant estoppel certificates, and that's important because you gotta get your estoppel certificates together so you know that each lease, they're up to date, here's the lease, there's three years remaining, and and, and it's, a, it's a good uh, a, a property because it has strong, hard hard leases. And cross-check sign estoppels against a rent deposit schedule. This tenant uh, stop certificates should be signed by the tenant. Right, right, right. signed by yeah. the tenant. Uh, that is correct. <coughs> Excuse me. The title for the stop certificates are signed by the tenant, which means yes. They're certifying that they're certifying that that's your lease. That's the amount that they're paying, and, and, and yeah. that's going to be the renewal. Yeah, exactly. So they're confirming all that information from the. The more right. the more leases that you have, and the time of uh, the the buyer and seller negotiation, that are strong leases, which. Three to five years left, the stronger your 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 uh, leverage is going to be because it's a strong retail uh, building and and your NOI is good and it's strong and you got leases here are going to last and nobody's going to leave. Service contract review on uh, any service contracts, landscaping, electrical, air conditioning. That's important. Okay, you want to know their history. Uh, uh, the, the buyer is you know he's investing a lot of, a lot of money, so you want to know. You know who, who's who's handling your air conditioning? Have they have they done a good job, or are they, mm -hmm. you know, they're just you know haven't done a good job and they're making a big mess out of your AC system or whatever. That's important. Verify all service contracts terminable without penalty. You might want to bring your own service contractors, which you have on other properties, and see what if there's anyone that you can you can you can terminate so you can bring the other people that you use in other properties or other of your properties. There you go. Confirm assignability of survey contracts and approved contracts to be transferred by fire cell litigation. Physical property inspection and review. That's important. Always go to the property. All right. Re receive review as built plans, specs. Uh, usually on big properties, the, 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 the owner should have them. If not, again, you go to MiamiDade.gov. You can go to the microfilm section. Under the folio number, uh, you pay a small fee. And any any uh, existing or past plans or permits on that property, you can you can print them out, all right, and you can have them readily available. But usually on big properties, uh, since they've gone through permitting through the process of tenant TI, tenant improvements, what have you, they should have uh, some type of plans. Uh, receive review existing environmental reports and studies. That's good. Important on on vacant land. Also important on shopping centers. Uh, you could have a retail. Uh, a tenant there, which is a laundry, where usually sometimes they go through a lot of environmental issues, you know, or you had a mechanic, an auto shop, 
and they had an environmental problem with Durham, which is a Department of Environmental Resource Management of Miami Dade County. You look at that and see if there's anything which is outstanding. Uh, receive review building permits, licenses, CUs. Every tenant should have a certificate of use. Uh, verify parking is adequate. This is so important and sometimes it's overlooked. Let's say you have a great uh, uh, client that he's buying a, uh, he's going to put a restaurant. Great chain, they're going to come in and they want to rent 8,000 square feet at an end cap, which is at the end of a, a shopping center, and they want to come in and, and put their, uh, their um, uh, uh, restaurant there. There's probably another two restaurants, little restaurants, which you're seeing little. Ha! Huh. You see, when, when that building was built, it was given the parking requirements based on that. But those 8,000 square feet could have been 8,000 square feet of retail. Maybe it was a, a, a dress store or a clothing store. Now, as it's changed into the restaurant, then your parking requirements change because parking requirements for restaurants, and these are one of the biggest ones, it's 50 square feet of patron area, one parking space. So let's say you had uh, uh, 5,000 square feet in, um, in uh, retail, uh, and it'll give you 5,000, you divide that by, by 300, give or take, 300 square feet. Right. In retail, it could have been 15 parking spaces for that clothing. What's the, what's the 300? 300, for one parking space for every 300 square feet of retail. So you go to, uh, that's the average, it, it changes uh, based on the, uh, the municipality, but 300 square feet, you have 5,000, you divide that by 300, is roughly around what? Roughly uh, around uh, 15, 15, 15 parking, 16 parking spaces, which is uh, 4,800 square feet. So for that clothing store, you only need a 15 parking spaces. Now all of a sudden you're trying, you'll get your client, oh, there's a great space, I'm gonna lease it for you. And it's a restaurant and they have probably, let's say uh, 5,000 square feet of patron area, which is a bar where people eat. You have to divide that 5,000 by 50. How much does that give you? 100. So the clothing store needed 15 spaces, but this restaurant now for the same amount needs 100 parking spaces for that patron area. So that's important. So that's why it says verified parking is adequate. Governmental regulation, practical requirements, lease requirements. And ver verify approximate square footage of improvements. If you're going to give uh, any TI, TI is the uh, uh, acronym for tenant improvements. And uh, if you're going to give any of that. Uh, review utility site plan, verify adequate utility hookups. Verify utility hookup fees paid. You're going to bring a restaurant, you're going to bring, bring an auto sh body shop. Uh, the, yeah, the electrical on, the, on, the, uh, on that space might not be adequate might have 125 amps of electrical. Uh, you might need 800 amps usually for a restaurant of that size. See, so you gotta, you gotta see how, uh, so you talk to FPNL, see how they come in, how they can, uh, and, and, and again, you can do that at the, at, the, at the, you can know about this knowledge. Usually buyers are going in, they bring in the architects and these were, this is what architects and engineers do beforehand and tell the buyer. But you as a real estate agent, it's always good to know. When you're sitting at the table and they're talking, it's not, you know, they're not talking of something and you're just bored there and say, what are they talking about? That means that you're knowledgeable, at least you have some information on it. Uh, list of uh, personal property or trade service names, uh, copies of liability, casualty, and other insurance. That's important. Uh, if there's any, uh, there could be uh, some uh, lawsuits, you know, on people that slip and falls that are, a tie to or to the corporation, uh, to the space, that's important. Site plans, leasing brochures, maps and photographs for more information. Again, the governmental review, and we talked about that, verify certificates of use, proper zoning, change zoning letter, uh, uh, verify no development rights or transfers, no pending rezoning, no utility mo uh, moratorium, which is important. There are sometimes utility moratoriums which is water and sewer placed on certain areas in Dade County um, uh, or have been placed in certain areas of the county, which basically, even though you have land, you can't build until that moratorium is lifted by the government agency. So after the initial due diligence has been completed, 
that obtained, zoning verification completed, and that the area analyzed, then you're ready for your offering memorandum, which is basically uh, in detail, what are you selling? What does it have? What is zoning? Everything that basically we've done in the in the uh, and the and the and the checklist. So uh, so it's important to uh, if you're going to summarize, uh, you have to first of all what I would do and very simple. You what do you do first when uh, you have a piece of property that you're selling? All right, or you're buying. What do you do first? You drive by, right? You drive by and tour the property different times of day. Okay. Uh, you can go to the building department. I told you, I do that. Go to the zoning department. Hey, I have this property. You know, don't take anything in account because there's a building next door and you, you know, I have this property. What am I, what can be done in that property? What other developments are being planned for that area? Is there any schools being planned? All these little due diligence which, which uh, you can do. Uh, contact zoning officials, all right, when you go to the zoning department. Uh, introduce yourself to your, your your neighbors. All right. Hey, I'm here. We're looking at this property. Here's my card. I'm looking at this property. If there's any information, you can uh, give me your history of what's been going on. Who knows? Maybe that person is uh, uh, thinking of selling. Not now, but he said, you know what? I'm thinking also of moving or doing something here because the, the area is improving or, or what have you. Uh, give me your card. I'll call you in a couple of months. Great. And then they'll wait and see what type of sale you do. And if you sell the property or you improve the property and everything goes good, he said, this is the type of agent I need. And they'll call you. So that's important. Talk to the, neighbor, the, the neighbors around. Uh, you can look at the police department to see what's any, uh, 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 if there's any, if, you're gonna, if, if it's a multifamily that uh, your, your client is going to build, have that information. Not that you're going to tell them, hey, you know, there's problems here. But at least you have the information because he might ask you. Hey, how's the area with crime? Is it good? Is it bad? At least you have that information. Uh, uh, looks for signs of potential encroachments, which is important. And you'll see that with your survey, and you'll see if you see anything that feels a little bit wrong with the property. You know, that fence, and check with the survey if it's encroaching. All right, the fence, which is important. And these are things that you want to tell your buyer. You know, so you won't have a problem. Hey, you know what? You, you show me this property, but you really didn't show me that this was inside the uh, the uh, the property line. So that's important. Now what we're going to do, and I'm going to give you a little exercise, uh, real quick, uh, to do a, if you want to do a little pro forma of a property that you're looking at, and uh, you're representing uh, the buyer, or you 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 have the seller. The seller usually is going to give it to you, but we'll go real quick with a. Uh, uh, a little pro forma. We have a property which is purchase price is one point four fifty, one million four fifty, right? And then uh, we're going to put uh, repairs of sixty three thousand dollars because you've gone through it. The engineers have looked at it. You talked with the with with with, uh, with the uh, with uh, the the buyer, and you know what? To paint and everything, it's, it's uh, sixty three million. And we're going to get a back loan of 100, 1130000 So your, your total equity investment, uh, I'm sorry, $134,750. <laughs> so your total uh, equity investment is three seventy eight. Basically what you have taken out of your pocket uh, to get this moving. Okay, that's your equity investment. We included the repairs in that number. Yeah, yeah, including including repa repairs. Down payment well. and repairs. Well, right, down payment and repairs. Uh, uh, you have uh, let's say it's uh, roughly give or take seventeen units in the building, and your rent is per unit. It's uh, one one thousand one hundred dollars per unit. Okay. O sea, los costos se los prestas al precio de compra. No deberían sumarlo. Uh, I'm sorry, I did, yeah. Here's 63, and the total, the total amount is 1,513,000, okay? 1,513,000 is your total cost, you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, uh, your bank loan, your equity investment is $378,000. That's what you've taken out of your money, or your little drawer, cash drawer, and this is where you're investing in the property. Now we're not going to go through the bank loan, you know, it 
conventional loans, commercial loans. That's why you owe the bank. Uh, units are, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, unit 17, rent 11, so you have an annual an annual rent roughly of $217,000. Uh, the vacancy rate roughly, we'll say, is around uh, 7.5. And you're talking 7.5, it's not bad vacancy rate. Anything above 10% vacancy rate, you got to, why? You got to yeah. see why, what's happening, okay. all right? But 7.55%, it's uh, it's excellent. And then uh, you have other other income or whatever, let's say four thousand dollars. So we're going to go to a, a gross a gross roughly give or take of two hundred and five thousand dollars. Okay, give or take. We're not going to start doing math, but gross two hundred and five. That's what you you're getting in your hand gross every month. Uh, vacancy yeah. seven point. Percent, percent. Every every year, correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you have a vacancy. I'm just I'm just throwing numbers out. Seven point five, which is roughly good. It's not bad, but I I, I like to see five percent. If it's seven point five, it's not bad. Once it gets to ten, then you have a little red flag. Uh, you got you got. Then you got to look at all these expense items. Now, we're not going to give you exactly details. You got to do taxes, insurance, utilities, and if the uh, seller doesn't have that, you're going to ask him, right? Uh, utilities, management fees, R&Ms, which is repairs and maintenance, uh, general administration, if you have any staff there, maybe a secretary or, or somebody, property manager, marketing, HOA, if there's any uh, home, home uh, associations included in the condo or, or, or the multifamily, and if you have any payroll, okay? And uh, once we once we get to that, let's say the net operating income expense, it's ninety three thousand, okay, a year. All right. So you divide. How do you, how do you get your NOI? Remember, we've gone through that. How is the NOI? Very simple. Yeah, the NOI is the gross operating income minus, right? Thanks. The NOI expenses which is give, gives you the NOI, which is net operating income. And this is the jewel. This is what buyers look for. What is your net operating income? And they might, even on the phone, they're going to tell you what's your NOI, what's your cap rate. Those are the first two questions they're going to ask you. So you got your NOI, and let's say the NOI here is uh, 100, give or take, it's about 110,000. What's the next step? Your capitalization rate, your cap rate. That's your return. Gross. El primer es gross yeah, operating gross income. operating income. Okay. And we get a cap rate roughly of around 7.6. percent. It's not bad. I usually say that anything below five percent. Not good. Anything above, I would say, 7%. No, yeah, of course. It's very good. Yeah. Now, you want to also verify it. But yes, basically, the higher the cap, the lower the price? No, the higher the, higher, the, the, higher the cap, cap, the better the it is on your investment. Mm -hmm. Basically, the NOI. The lower the price, the higher the cap. The, the NOI, NOI. Right. So, what we're doing, let's do the calculation for the cap right here. So, we have the net operating income. So 110, no? you get there, 110 divided by? The NOI divided by price by is price. equal to the cap rate. The, the, so if you divide. The total price including the repairs. Yeah, yeah. if you divide. If you, right, if you divide this NOI by the purchase price that the seller is, uh, and he's giving you all these numbers, the you're going to get your, your, your cap rate. Which is seven and something. Okay, so, the, the, the net operating income. Okay, the net operating income, it's your gross operating income, which is this. Okay. All right, which is basically your rent times 12 months. Uh, your vacancy rate, if there's 7.5%, you usually have to take a, uh, the amount of units times 1,100. 
and 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 maybe you have two or three units, uh, it, it'll give you the vacancy rate. Other, if you have any other uh, expenses, it give, it gives you the the gross, the gross operating income. Mm -hmm. And from the gross operating income, then you got your expenses, all right? Which you subtract your expenses, which it, and this could go up to, you know, sixteen, depending on the amount of expenses that property has. So we, got uh, we could have se we could have security. Maybe it's a big mall. They have security. They got service contracts. Whatever it is, it'll give you the the expense. And it will give you the NOI, net operating income. That is what you are taking in your pocket before uh, uh, before everything is said and done. It's right here, okay? And from there, you divide that by the price, and you get your cap rate. If you're the seller and you have this, you have your pro forma, and you usually want to compare those and studies, you want to give your purchase price, then you're gonna you're gonna put your purchase price to you know to put based on your comparables to put your cap rate at a good cap rate. Now, if it, if the property just because of the comparables is not worth that money, then your cap rate is gonna be in the bottom. You just can't put any any purchase price to make your cap rate uh, go high. But that's basically very simple. Uh, um, well, uh, in that case, you will offer less. On the property, right? To increase it. Correct. You you, you you would offer less on the property to increase your cap rate. <clears throat> but sometimes uh, sellers don't want to do that. Well, you know, they, they don't want to do offer. that. They'll they'll offer more, and your their cap rate goes down to about four point something five. Right. And uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna. It doesn't mean that this cap rate that you're selling is gonna be the cap rate that your buyer is gonna keep. Why? Because he might be bringing in a new business plan. Oh, and also, if you're going to acquire a building with a cap rate of 4% or something like that, and then, and then you the improve on it. go by, the rent are going to be increasing. Of course. You know, the property you're going to improve on, on it because you're going to see that the seller, right. well, he's charging, you know, $18 a square foot. Now I'm going to charge. 5% cap doesn't mean it's going to stay there forever. Right. I'm going to charge $21 a square foot because of the area, because I'm going to paint the building. Maybe the seller hasn't wanted to paint the building. You know, all these little things. You know, it's like uh, you're buying a shoe store. Uh, it doesn't mean because he's selling a hundred grand annually, you can't sell 150 yeah, because you're going to bring your marketing plan. But these are things at least that you have this to start out. Then you got your debt service ratio, which is very important. And these are things the bank look at, which is how much is your uh, the loan? There is uh, how much is your loan? How much is your debt service? You know, debt service, how much you pay annually on your mortgage based on what you do, all right? Which is basically the NOI divided by the debt service annually. This, the NOI divided by how much you pay the bank annually. And uh, this is roughly like 1.4. You can do the math. That's pretty good, all right? Which is, you can, uh, you can, uh, Pay your debt service without a problem because the banks are on the loan. They want to know that you know the property. Uh, they, they they're being protected. Pay for itself. Right, they're being protect, protected. And then of course the cash flow, which is which is which is important here. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, that's a little pro forma that you can do yourself, or you can ask the, the seller. You can verify. It. It's a very simple math, really. And these are things that are that are important, so you can have a knowledge. Of what you are, you are. Okay. Your debt service is the mortgage. Okay. What, how much you're paying back to the bank annually, and you divide that by. Uh, you divide the NOI. Do you have money left over at the end of the year? Okay, money left over at the end of the year to pay their mortgage. To pay their mortgage every single year. If this was less. And, and this gives you a debt service of over five or you're gonna have a problem with the bank. They're not gonna give you the loan. They're not gonna give you the loan because you're gonna be delayed every month. How are you gonna pay for that if you got all these expenses? You know, so that's important, the debt service ratio. Um, and this is a very simple pro forma and this is good also in the, your due diligence. And uh, you will ask the buyer or your client, hey, can you give me uh, 
your P&L, profit and loss, and, 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 and uh, your performa, or if not, you can work one out. So we've talked about today about the due diligence uh, process. It's a huge process. I don't expect for you to learn it today, or but it's something that you can also uh, continue. We have these uh, classes uh, every month. Here in One Stop Realty at the uh, Westchester headquarters, 2530 Southwest 87th Avenue. And uh, every month while well, we get the commercial real estate classes free of charge, uh, everyone is invited, brokers, agents, or even bring your guests in. Yeah. Uh, guests in because they might want to uh, uh, get their own licenses, real estate license, which yeah. we also give them that opportunity. Again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can, uh, if you need any information uh, from me on, on, on any uh, due diligence or commercial real estate matters, zoning, uh, you can contact with me at, at uh, 786-399-3374. I'll be glad to help you. Or you can go to my email, JAG, which is J-A-G at onestoprealty.com. Real quick, before I leave, I'd like to present... Uh, uh, yeah, or the, or, or my broker of One Stop Realty, and he's going to tell you. And remember, uh, May first, May first. I uh, hope to see you at the Miami Board of Realtors, Miami Springs headquarters for my uh, lecture on zoning and how it works in real estate. Thank you very much, Sam. Well, let me tell you, on May first, we are going to be there to support you. You do a great job in the presentations. The, the knowledge is there. So we all take from that, all that information, and hopefully make commercial deals happen, which is uh, that's all uh, that we're here for. Also, what we do in these this meetings is that we dejamos uh, a los rieto que nos digan qué propiedad quieren vender, no tiene que ser comercial también, que tengan listeada y si queremos que nos, eh, nos digan que, eh, que está hot ahora mismo, que quieren ya vender, que necesitan oferta, que we want to get moving. Uh, I say that right now it's the second quarter of the year. We're working for the summer, make money for yeah. summer. We're going on like vacation, it. we're going to be, we're going on a cruise. So, you know, all those things are goals and metas que tenemos. So, tenemos que ponernos a trabajar, seguir tocando puertas, opening doors. And, and, and something that, you know, that we're doing with these videos is so important, you know. And thanks, my daughter Marina, for the great job she's doing in, in yes, social media. She's doing Everyone, you gotta do a lot of more. I like the Facebook app about the yeah. all, all those, all those apps. Apps. Yeah, yeah. social media department is really works yes. hard for yeah. every single agent. Yes. And we want to add Sam and Darrell, which we have here, Sandro or Ochoa. Uh, he also helps us and he gives a lot of classes or he coordinates classes oh, at yeah. the Doral Definitely. office. Oh, yeah. Just go into Sandro. our website, right? It's a key manager in the, the office for all the help that he provides the company. For the training, I want to give you everything. thank you, you know, thank you, big thank for to you, Sam, for everything yeah. that you do and everything that you bring in to the one stop. Okay. Uh, okay. Keep doing, keep no doing. Test. No, huh? no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so, uh, no, 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 what I want to say about the videos, we all need to do a lot of videos yeah. with our <laughs> phone. That's yeah. how video, we, video, 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 video. That's how we bring trust. Right here, do a video. Go ahead and. Take video, post it in your Facebook and your Instagram. No, talk to your audience. That's how you build trust in the real That's right. Yeah, you talk to That's your audience. Like them, you know? build your yourself. <laughs> you build yourself. But it's a uh, you know personal business. We're selling properties, but most of everything, we're selling ourselves. When we go to clients, we need to sell ourselves. We gotta say we are the best. They gotta like us and trust us, so they can do business with us. So the videos. That's what they. What's that, that's what they do. They yeah, actually bring in that confidence. From from everyone. So thank you, thank you, for, thank you very Maybe much for, for being. Right. Thank you very much for being in contact with Sometimes. us. Remember, on May first, go to the Miami Board of Realtors in Miami Springs, 10, 10 a.m. to twelve p.m. I assure you, you are going to learn a lot about zoning and how it works in real estate. I will be the presenter, and I will be there to help you and tell you about this okay. most important topic. Oh, yeah. Where so what we say, one stop, one stop, one real stop is all you need. It's all you need. And it's a beautiful <laughs> day for real estate today. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.